Do you ever wonder to yourself if that guy, you know the guy, is thinking of you or misses you? Do you wish that he would just feel the pain of what life would be like if you weren't in it so that he can finally realize how much value you actually have? Well, on today's show, we're going to be discussing how to make a man miss you. But I'll warn you, this information might work a little bit too well and have him worshiping you or begging you instead. So fair warning. Number one is going to be muting. But for those of you on the slightly older side, when I say mute, you probably don't understand what that means. This is very important because I know the very first thing that a lot of you think, okay, if I want him to miss me or I'm over it or whatever, I want, I want to get over this guy. I'm just going to block him. When you're making a guy miss you, it's very important that you present the idea and the concept. Like I've said before, that you're disinterested. Majority of you want him to miss you so that he'll come back uh, with a better mindset, ready to be the man that you want him to be. So you don't want this to end forever. Obviously, that's probably why you want him to miss you. When you block someone, when he goes on your profile, he can can't contact you, he can't message you, he can't see anything that you're posting and vice versa, okay? But when you mute someone, he is capable of seeing your profile like regular, he can message you like regular, he can see uh, what you're posting on your story like regular. However, for you, you cannot see his stories or his post on your timeline. So when you're scrolling through and he posts something of him at the gym, it's not just gonna pop up on your timeline. You know how when you're scrolling through and your favorite man that you've been dealing with posts something and you can see his little profile picture and you can see it highlighted in his story and then your heart drops for a second until you finally click the story and you're like anxious trying to see what he, what he posted. And each time you refresh your page or each time you open your app, you're like thinking to yourself, oh my God, I wonder if he posted a story this time. I wonder what he posted. I wonder what he's doing, right? And that addiction that you feed, okay, I want you to mute him. I know you, me and you are friends. I know that a lot of you will not be able to resist the temptation of looking at what he's doing 24 seven. Okay. He's not an idiot. If he knows that you guys aren't speaking, but he can see that you're watching his stories in the first 30 seconds of them, of him posting it, then he knows he has a little bit of control over you and he's not a dumb, dumb guys aren't stupid. Okay. So when he's posting, he might post something purposely to trigger you knowing that him triggering you will probably lead to you messaging him. It's control. When you block someone, it comes across as you're bothered. That's not good because you're you're giving him his ego boost in doing that. And then when he's going through his story and he's checking and he's trying to see, huh, I wonder what she's thinking. I wonder if she's watching what I'm doing. I wonder if she saw that I posted two wine glasses instead of one, right? Because I wanted her to see that and I know she's going to freak out and I know she's probably going to message me. And then when he's scrolling through, scrolling through, scrolling through, and he sees that you didn't even send you didn't even watch it. I never said that anything that we're going to be doing here is going to sound nice and cuddly and like a Disney princess movie. It's not okay, but you can get what you want. So in order for him to miss you, unfortunately, you're going to have to strip him of his ego and strip him from of the idea that, hey, uh, you love me so much that uh, no matter what goes on, you're going to be thinking of me and you're going to want to be with me so badly. And there's nothing I can do that would make you disinterested in me. You got to strip him of that. Number two is no reply. You do not listen to me. You do not listen to me. You do not look in my eyes and listen to my voice. You do not respond to anything is not just not texting him in order for him to miss you and come to the realization that I want to be with you. He needs to be able to contrast what he felt like and what his life like was with you versus what his life like is without you. And for some of you, the mistake you're making is you're not allowing him to properly contrast the black with the white, because when he's without you, he's not really without you because you still kind of answer his messages. You still kind of text him back. You still kind of talk to him every now and again. You still kind of check up on each other. No. And you also allow him to have to come to the realization and accept the fact that even though he sends you a hundred, a thousand, a million messages. You are not shaken or moved by anything he says to you. The most painful thing for someone to endure is to feel invisible to you, not to feel like you hate them, to feel invisible to you as if you have emotionally and mentally moved on from them. Now, this is the other important thing that I want you to listen up with. If you're on the toilet and you're pooping, stop pooping. I don't care if it's halfway, you suck it back in. When I'm talking about no replying, I'm not just talking about text messages and phone calls. I'm also talking about this silly silliness 
that you be doing with the guys that you like where you're sending each other Instagram reels and you're casually Snapchatting each other for you, those of you who are even on the younger side, or you're sending each other TikTok videos. You do not respond to any of those things. When he is without you, because you want to stimulate him missing you, he is without you. And the reason I need to make that very clear is because I know that that's the first thing some of you are going to run to. Well, you know, we're not, we're not even talking. We're in no contact, but you know, when he sends me a funny reel, I still like his reel because I, you know, like the reel was funny. So I just felt like I should like it because no, 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 get a grip, but I don't want you liking it. I don't want you acknowledging it whatsoever. You don't acknowledge him. You act as if I'm disinterested in you. You could send me a thousand of these. I'll just view them at the very most and I'll be gone. And obviously this is going to happen for a period of time. You basically are not going to be responding until he starts begging. And I mean, really begging. You don't even, you know, the first time he's begging is not even enough begging. He's got to be begging. And I'm talking about for weeks. Number three is I want you to avoid parties and events that you are likely to see him at. It's listen, like I said before, if you're gone, and you want him to miss you, then you're gone so that he can actually miss you. You're not half present. You're not a quarter of the way present. You're not kind of there in some places and kind of there in other places. And you text him sometimes and you call No, no, you're gone. You've disappeared. Poof in the thinner. You're a magician. You're David Blaine. In order for him to actually miss you, you have to not be present in any capacity. So if you're going to a party, a house party or an event or whatever, you get, you're not dumb. Okay. You're not dumb. You know, once you start hearing particular people or uh, attending this party or attending this event, you know, what group of friends hangs out with what group of friends and who spends time with who. And if they're inviting this group, then you know, this group is likely to come. And then this group is like, and you can put two and two together and get an idea of when they're going to show up. But if you do things like, let's say you guys go to the same a gym and you actually want to stimulate him missing you, this might be time to switch up your gym. You don't want to give him any place where he's seeing your, your face, seeing your beautiful body, seeing your beautiful silhouette, seeing your dump truck, seeing your voluptuous cities. No, he does not get to see. If you accidentally find yourself in a place where, oh my God, I just ran into him or, oh my God, he's at the same party as me. Remove yourself. If you actually want him to move, miss you. I know it sounds toxic. That's because it is okay, but you'll get what you want. It gives him hope that he will be able to access you and speak to you by seeing you at that event. And he'll be able to break you at that event that he sees you or at that party that he sees you. Number four, I want you to occupy your mind. Okay. This is actually really important. I want everyone to act like, 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 listen up now. Cause, th th cause this is the part where you need to gain this regardless of what ends up happening in the end. I want you to occupy your mind with something that you're passionate about and you actually deeply care about, not something you're fake passionate about and not something you're doing to meet more boys. Okay. So when I say occupy your mind, I, I am not saying open up hinge, make a cute hinge profile, show off your dump truck on hinge and start messaging a whole bunch of guys on hinge. No, no, no. That's not what I mean by occupy your mind. Okay. And I'm not talking about occupying your mind on going on a thousand other dates. No, no, no. You occupy your mind with something, an activity, a hobby, a passion. That's not boys. Okay. A passion that's not opening your legs, okay? A passion that has nothing to do with pineapples or your squirtle. A passion or a hobby that you can focus your time and energy on. Why is this so important? Because in the process of you trying to stimulate someone missing you, obviously you have to not be present and you have to be absent from that person while you want, if you want them to miss you. And the only way for you to properly be absent and not present in that person's life in any capacity, especially for those of you who find it really, really hard to withdraw from people that you are attached to, you need to have something else to pour your energy into so that you don't start spiraling the moment that you're triggered or you're like, oh, I'm so lonely and I'm so bored. <sighs> the, the more bored you are, the more, uh, gray and lifeless your life is, the easier it will be and the more tempting it will be for you to start messaging him again or reach out to him. And so you've kind of defeated the purpose of everything you've been trying to do here. Okay. So why did you listen to me? Why did you build out all this strategy when you were just going to message him anyways? I'm going to give you this and make this so easy for you that you can't not do it. All you have to do 
to occupy your mind, even if you don't know what you like. Some of you, you know what you're passionate about. You like painting, you like drawing, you like art, and you're, you're good. Now, for those of you who have no idea what you would want to spend your time doing because you don't know what you like, is you go on TikTok and you type in things to do in and then whatever city that you live in, okay? So if you live in Miami, things to do in Miami. There's lots of things to do in Miami. If you live in New York, things to do in New York. If you live on the outskirts, right? If you live in a suburb or you live like out in the country, just type in things to do in whatever the closest uh, large major city is to you. All you have to do is just scroll through and see if anything piques your interest and then go do that one. And then you just keep doing that thing or you just keep rotating a couple of things. Now I know that this show is titled How to Make a Man Miss uh, You, but at the end of the day, if you don't properly detach yourself from the man, you're never gonna get a guy to miss you because you're never gonna be absent enough for him to actually miss you. So this is why this all works together. If you don't know how to detach, you can't be absent. If you're not absent, then he won't miss you are you following me so far now number five i want you to post your fun this is hyper important that everyone pays attention because this is going to vary for everyone and you need to understand the concept so that you can understand how this applies to your own specific situation it's very important that when you post your fun you stay true to yourself i don't want you to turn into someone that you're not what i mean by that is some of you are not posters okay you're not really on social media that heavy so for you to just start posting up everything all of a sudden, it makes it seem like you're bothered and you're trying to prove a point. You don't want to be doing that. You want to stay looking like you're unbothered. So for those of you who are actually like you post a lot, you like to post memes, you post yourself, you post going like you post regularly. It's not strange or out of the ordinary for you to be posting one or two, even three times a day. Then I want you to post at the exact same rate that you were posting before but I just want your post to be hyper fixated on you and your fun, right? So for example, if you love painting and you and you really enjoy uh, spending your time painting these really intricate murals and stuff like that, you can post yourself painting, you can post yourself in the, in the process of it, you can post your uh, final result, right? I, that's the type of things that I want you to be posting and I want you to post it at the same pace that you would regularly be posting. Don't switch it up. You don't want you posting to become an ego boost for him. This is where I want you all to be paying attention. What you're not gonna do, what you're not gonna do. Look into my eyes, okay? You're not going to post any sort of sub at him. Don't post no quotes and don't post no uh, memes that, uh, that would apply to him. Don't post no videos or pictures that would apply, nothing. No subliminals because it's an ego boost to him. When you post that subliminal, He's going to know that you're posting it because you're trying to send a shot at him. What's that going to do for him? It's going to give him an ego boost because he's going to know that you're bothered. No more Justin LeBoy quotes you're posting on your story. Now, if you're someone, for those of you who are like, I never post. I literally don't post anything. I have barely anything on my, um, on my uh, Instagram. What do I do? I want you to stay true to that. And if you're going to post something, I want it to be absolutely minimal. Stay as minimal as you are, okay? So if you're not someone that even regularly posts in general, when you post, it doesn't make sense for you to be posting up, you're going out in this nice dress and you got 30 posts and no, just post the same. Like if you're gonna post something, post it once every, I don't know, like a week or something like that, make it natural. 